Hey, I uh, just wanted to go. Hey, Courtney, I think. Just wanted to go live um, for two reasons. A, it's absolutely beautiful out. And B, I just had a really good conversation with one of my online sessions that I wanted to go over with you guys because I think it's a really good topic. Um, and if you guys are joining me, don't forget to like this video. And I'm also going to be giving a online training giveaway at the end of this video. So make sure you watch the whole thing. So today I want to, again, just just one of those kind of spur of the moment type things. I got a cup of coffee. Lola is here. Lakota is also here. Uh, she's just chilling. Uh, like I said, it's a beautiful day. I had a really good conversation with one of my online training sessions um, just a little bit ago, and I wanted to hop on here and chat with you guys. First and foremost, um, again, thank you guys so much for joining me on this channel. Um, we're growing and growing and growing every single day, and I can't thank you guys enough for watching everything that I'm doing here on YouTube. And I think it's just really cool that we're creating the community that we're creating. Um, you guys are so helpful with each other in the comments. You guys are nothing but positive in this sometimes not so positive dog training industry. So I'm really uh, happy that you guys are, are joining me in, in everything that I do. And um, so thank you guys. So good morning. Welcome to uh, my driveway in upstate New York. And I have, like I said, some coffee. It's beautiful out. We're going to talk about some dog stuff. But thank you guys so much for joining me. So um, my online session, guys, basically was going over. The, the question that really sparked this was how many times do I ask my dog to do a behavior because they're finding a lot of very conflicting information. Look at Lola. She's like, yeah, answer that. A lot of conflicting information. And I wanted to discuss this. So, you know, I think, I think as, as a dog trainer or whatever you want to call me, um, <clears throat> the, when you're working with dogs, guys, it's, it's very, very, very discretionary when you're working with the dog. Like everything is very dependent on what you want to do. Now, in the dog training industry, you're going to find a lot of different people will have a specialty and be much like culinary school. I talk about this a lot. Dog training is an art. Um, you add your special twist to it. You add your special um, whatever to it. And it's, it's very um, – it can change and evolve from different trainer to different trainer. Um, like I always say, guys, it really just depends on the, the results that you're getting. Um, the comfortability of the dog and as well as the owners understanding what you're doing. And so for me, you know, this conversation sparked just because they were like this one dog training channel, like never ask your dog to do two different things. Or I'm sorry, never ask your dog to say, like for an example, if you ask your dog to sit, you should never ask them to sit again. And again, and I know that some things are out of context in most situations on the you know, on videos and things like that. And especially for like the videos that I put out, I try to be as clear and transparent as possible, which some people give me a lot of crap about because I'm very thorough with my discussions and I'm very, um, I just go into depth because I want everybody to really understand what I'm trying to say. I don't want any, I'm trying not to leave any gray areas out. And so Coda is going to drag my phone off here because she wants all she wants out. All she wants to do is play with this frisbee. And if I throw it up there, she's going to find a way to get into the back of my truck and get this. It's she's insane. So anyway, so the conversation was is like this one person says this, this one person says this. Look, guys, it really just I, I know that dog owners are well, some dog owners uh, go to trainers for advice and direction on what to do, why to do it, how they do it, and just know that no. And again, as long as you're getting the results that you want. The dog is happy, you're empathetic, and so on and so forth. Look, did you guys see her? She just sharked right through. She's like a, she's crazy. But um, I don't think it really matters. And look, and look at this. She came back with a completely different Frisbee. She's a freak, I'm telling you. Um, but like for me, when I'm working with a dog, for the same example I was just talking about, if I'm working with a dog that's distracted by all this stuff going on, they've never seen me, they've, they've never seen leash pressure, they've never seen structure, they don't even know the command or the behavior that you're really asking them to do that well yet, I'm not going to ask them to do that behavior that they're kind of eh about 
and then nail them with a correction because my thought process is say it once. Now, again, you might find a trainer that completely disagrees with that and says only say it once, correct the dog immediately after. Who's right and who's wrong? We're both right. It's just an, an opinion on how you train. Now, for me, as you guys know, I'm very transparent with what I do and what, I'm, what I enjoy doing. I am not a competitive dog trainer that, that specializes in competitive obedience. Therefore, when I'm, when I'm doing obedience with dogs, my regimen and my structure is going to be entirely different from somebody who competes and that's all they live and breathe. And, and a, lot of, a lot of dog trainers also don't do dog training full time. They do it as a side, which means when they're in dog training, they're fully like in it. You know, they're really, really, really getting into it, which is great. But I just want to let you guys know that you guys need to like decipher what the best dog training is for you and your dog and your goals and accomplishments of what you need. And again, I can't say that like enough that I think oftentimes people will search out for a dog trainer and you might get somebody that has been dog training for 30 years, but they specialize in rally obedience or agility, or basic obedience, or whatever, obedience training in general, and they don't touch behavior modification training, and you bring a dog to that specific trainer, it's going to be really hard for them to get over certain hur hurdles. So as I can't tell you how many times dog trainers have been like, I went to another trainer and they said it was impossible. It was only impossible because it was out of their comfort zone of what they uh, are comfortable with doing, which is totally fine. Uh, and at the end of this, I'm going to do some Q&A, so you guys stick around. We have uh, 160 people watching. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like this uh, video when you get in. And we're going to do some Q&As, and I'll do whatever you guys want with Lakota. So you guys always like to see Lakota do some dancing and all that stuff. Um, so the caption of the video is, what's the best way to train your dog? And the best way to train your dog, guys, is making sure that when you're doing research on the dog trainer that you're trying to, to work with or whatever, you just have to, it's just like personal training. When you're asking dogs to do like, or I'm sorry, when you're asking like yourself of like, okay, what do I want to be? How do I want to be motivated? W what goals and things do I have? And you start like, and I think we live in, an, in a situation now, which is a, a great opportunity for people to consume content from the actual business or the person that they're going to hire before they hire them. So they know exactly how they are, how they're going to act, what their goals are, what their guidelines are, and so on and so forth. So we live in a cool world where that is. But anyway, I just wanted to go on this topic because I think dog owners, you guys just get cons get consumed and confused with, well, wait, wait a minute, this one person over here says this, and now this other person, I don't, I don't. It's, you guys have to take things with a grain of salt. Oh, Oregon. I love Oregon. I want to go back so bad. But anyway, you guys have to take that with a grain of salt and just realize like, oh, okay, that application for this dog is different from the application with this dog. Like Lakota, if I asked her to do something, she knows fully well of what I'm asking her. So she will be punished or corrected or get some sort of pressure if she doesn't comply pretty quickly because she's made the mental decision to say, I don't want to. Now, if I get a green dog or a new dog or a dog that's never really been trained before and I get them out and I ask them to do something and my philosophy is, well, only say it once. I'm going to correct the dog immediately after. It's not fair to that dog. You, that, the dog doesn't know what you're asking as well as they've never been trained before. And they're like looking around and they're like, what, what's going on? What environment am I in? And so on and so forth. Washington, Nash, Knoxville. Uh, cool. You guys from from all over. I saw some UK people in there. Kansas City. Sup. I'm actually actually I'm not going to Kansas City. I'm going to Texas soon. But Chicago. Cool. Um, so anyway, so I just wanted to hop on here, talk about that for a little bit. That nobody's Italy, New Hampshire, Colorado, London, Illinois, Ohio, Texas, Malaysia, Virginia Beach, Wyoming. Oh, Wyoming. Portugal. Um, Oklahoma. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go to Oklahoma, New Jersey, Arkansas, so many people, Norfolk, England, I am working on getting to England or just like in Europe in general, um, Southern California, good morning, good morning, Argentina, Alabama, 
Wow. Lots of lots of people. Texas, cool. Oregon. Yeah, Oregon is something I want to do. So listen, guys, I just wanted to have that conversation, and then now I'm ready to answer some dog training questions if you have them. But I think moral of the story with what I was saying, you guys can start a asking your dog training questions, and then we're going to do the giveaway after. Um, moral of the story, guys, is is there's a lot of different ways to do a lot of different things and you just have to work with somebody who can get results and that you're comfortable with and that's really what it's about i mean like i said dog train for me i always tell people dog training is not a science it's an art you can't put like science and textbook regimens on animals because every single animal learns differently and every single trainer applies training techniques differently so it's, it's all about experience. We had this conversation in one of my podcasts with Michael Ellis recently about dog training certifications. And, you know, that's a whole conversation that we've had. So it's, there's a lot to it. But anyway, I appreciate you guys. If you guys are watching this after, um, you're going to have an opportunity, probably better than anybody, to win. Um, I'm going to give away two online sessions. They're going to be half an hour sessions. Um, we're going to be giving a half an hour session away and then another half an hour session away working with me just like this, except it's just me and you and not 200 other people. All right. Um, bug. Let's see. Um, whoever just asked me how to contact me, you can go to my website. America's canine educator.com. The other question that we've gotten a couple times in this live chat is do I go other places to train? Absolutely. Pretty much guys, my whole, my career right now is literally just about being full time on YouTube as well as because that's, I really want to make continue to make content for you guys. It's like something I enjoy so much, mainly because of what I said in the beginning of this video is we've created such a cool community. I feel like I feel so connected with all of you because we're, we're kind of growing together and we're doing like, you know, we're, there's like 700 to 1,000 new people subscribing to my channel every single day. So we're growing like immensely, which is really cool. So I, I want to try to devote my time to you guys. Um, but the other thing that I'm doing is I'm doing out of states as well where I fly to you um, and work directly with you for at least two days. If you guys want to, to book something like that for, for this year, um, you can email me at canineeducator at gmail.com. All right. My dog values the attention of other dogs more than me. Um, is there a moment and her impulse control is non-existent, especially when she catches a scent? How do I regain her attention? Well, if you watch my recent YouTube video on teaching a dog how to focus, there's two different things is you can't correct a dog for something they don't know what they've done wrong, right? So if you get a dog out and you're asking them to do something, um, like here, here's the other thing too, is if you guys like look at Lakota, like obviously taking like one of the six Frisbees she's thrown at me so far, like I can get her attention. So I think um, to answer your question, you said that the other dogs are more valuable than, um, than you. Well, then you have to create more value and engagement with your dog. Sometimes that means literally teaching them a command to look at you and then giving them some sort of punishment for not looking at you in those times. Um, but I also think being fair to the dog by offering them something more valuable while you're out. Uh, the collar won't stay in place. She's very slippery hair. Slippery hair, that's weird. Um, get a tighter collar. My 11-month-old Roddy will not drop socks or towels or really anything. You can't play fetch with her because she will not drop it. Um, that's a whole thing, but uh, typically speaking, um, dogs who don't drop things think that they're not going to get it back. Um, so like with Lakota, I'll show you guys really quick. This is a good opportunity for me to like do a little bit of improv training. So with Lakota, guys, let me show you what I've done with her. Yes. So I'll ask her to take this, right? And she wants to play tug and she's excited. But then if I out her... Um, she'll drop it because she knows she's ultimately going to get a reward. What's that reward? Is she's going to get it right back. So this is the, this is the type of stuff you need to be doing with your dog for play. Quota out. She drops it, and then she's like, "Okay, yes, yes, good." And I give it right back. Or out. Boom, and I throw it. So you have to recalibrate your relationship with your dog uh, regarding an actual item that your dog plays tug with. T 
teach them the out, give them right back. It's called, it's a form of resource guarding, uh, honestly. Um, the dog is resource guarding something that they don't think they're gonna get again, which then ultimately can create a lot of issues down the road. San Diego, beautiful. I went to San Diego. Um, me, my film, my film dude, Adam, and my girlfriend, Taylor, we went to San Diego. It was absolutely beautiful. We trained for like three days on Del Mar Beach, um, on a house on Del Mar Beach, and then we went to La Jolla, and hung out in La Jolla a little bit, which was awesome. And we had a beer that I've been thinking about ever since. If anybody lives in California and can get me this beer, I will trade or even buy them off of you. It's a beer called Cali Creamin. It's, it's Cali, C-A-L-I, Creamin. It's like a cream ale, like it's like a nitro. I have been craving that beer since I left California. And, I, and I'm literally thinking about booking a trip this fall to San Diego just to have that beer because it's so good. Uh, all right. Do you train guard dogs? Sometimes. Um, we've trained some police dogs before and sold them. How can I help my anxious Akita Shepherd who is one year old and scared to do new things such as swimming? Um, great question. I think what you have to do is just take your time. Take your time, be patient, lots of positive reinforcement. It's just like with kids, when a kid gets on a bike and they're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I can't, I can't, I can't. You have to just do it in little small increments. And sometimes that means taking your time and being extraordinarily patient. Um, Robert, do you know, you know that beer, so you must live in California. Um, but being very patient uh, during those circumstances and incrementally. So if it means like one foot in, one foot out, the next day, two feet in, two feet out, taking your time huge yeah if you're going to listen I'm, I'm not kidding like if anybody in like the california area can send me like a case or something of that beer i will literally like venmo or pay you back seriously or i'll give you some free no bad dog merch or whatever but i'm like craving that it's so good um how can i get my german shepherd puppy to stop being mouthy i've tried all suggestions uh, Courtney, good question. Um, the best thing to do is just make sure that you're being very clear with your puppy, but also knowing why it's happening. Puppies who are mouthy, they just came from their mom, they just came from their litter mates. The only way they know how to communicate is with their mouth. That's how they talk. I'm actually, one of my trainers, Zach, is getting a brand new German Shepherd puppy next week. I think she's going to be eight or nine weeks. I, I plan on doing an entire, like, puppy stage video and that's going to be included the best thing to do is not give them extremities to bite if your dog is biting your hands especially puppies don't 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 give them anything to bite the other thing whoo it's getting hot out here um and my hair is like super in insanely long coda you're gonna knock things over stop being crazy yeah right so the other thing that i would also suggest to anybody that's dealing with dogs who are nipping at that at that uh, um, age is simply make sure you're not reacting. So you, you do not want to react to dogs that are biting you or nipping you. So a lot of people will go, Oh no, don't the puppy's like, heck yeah, I just got your attention. That's what I've been trying to do this whole time. So make Lola is super like Lola, my older dog, you guys know she's like 16. I've had her since high school. She's, she's so awesome. She's super good about correcting dogs. Actually, there's a funny story this morning, guys, about my St. Bernard. You guys know my St. Bernard Thompson, 150 pound giant dog. He's usually out here going <laughs> in my face, but it's it, even right now it's like 60 degrees. It's way too hot for him. Um, but he actually was like behind, he was behind my door or no, I'm sorry. He was, Lola was in between the door frame, that Lola, and he was behind her and he wanted to get out and he would not come out because she's corrected him when he was a puppy that correction and that dis so so i'm sitting there thinking you know and I, and i and that's the other thing is it's like and that's why i love going live this is such like an improv thing but um i was sitting there thinking this morning that like when she corrected my puppy thompson at like that early stage and now he's like obviously 150 pounds and she's not he literally will like do this if she like shows his teeth because of that one correction or two corrections that she gave him as a puppy which is why I think like discipline and corrections and being able to like punish a dog very naturally um, just by like using your leash or using a prong collar is so important because it's lasted literally, he's, he's gonna be 11 this year, which is insane for St. Bernard, but um, it's lasted so, so long for him. It's such an imprinting thing. Um, so anyway, good question. Um, oh, if you guys are just getting here, we have um, 
close to 250 people watching, which is great. Uh, good morning. Welcome to my live stream that I improv did. I'm going to go live on Instagram tomorrow um, with Brittany um, Matthews, which is uh, she's uh, she has uh, steel and silver Mahomes. And we're going to do a Q&A tomorrow on Instagram as well. So um, anyway, if you guys are here, like this video. Um, and if you guys want, um, I'll, I'll continue to do this uh, uh, Q&A. And then again, at the end, we're going to give away two online. If you guys are struggling with your dog, I can work with you all over the world via Skype, FaceTime, or Zoom. And I'm giving away two online sessions. And I'm going to announce the winner 24 hours after this video is finally published. And you guys can enter to win at the end. Um, but we're going to keep answering some questions. Um, uh, let's see. Jeez, a lot of good questions. Um, a lot of questions in general. Um, Amanda, I think your question is, is my dog isn't eating due to the passing of my two other dogs. How do I get him to eat? Please answer. Well, I'm sorry that your dogs have passed away. Um, the best thing to do is just time. Time is like literally the best thing for situations like that. Um, and trying to get into a routine and try to be strong and structured for your dog. Uh, it's the best thing to do. And again, if you guys are just getting in here, don't forget to like this video when you get in. And, and the reason why I say like this video is because it tells my other followers that I'm live who forgot to see it or whatever. So it kind of just notifies the algorithm of like, hey, I'm live. And the more people we can get in here, the more questions, the more opportunities for other people to like win stuff and all that stuff. Uh, do I like American... So Pitbulls are, if you guys, if you guys are real OGs of, of me and, and continue to watch me, um, you know, my two favorite breeds to train are Pitbulls and Labrador Retrievers. Absolutely love them uh, simply for the reasons of their uh, ability to learn and wanting and willingness to, to work for people. Let's see. What do I do? Jeez, there's so many questions. Ah, Oregon. Woohoo. Lots of Oregon peeps. If you guys can find me a place in Oregon to train, um, I'll be out there in a heartbeat. It's hard to find places to train. Should I let my dog use the feel of the e-collar to start using? Should I, should I let my dog get used to the feel? Oh, good question. So we talk about this often. We just talked about this um, on one of my recent podcasts. But yes, um, when you get a remote collar, uh, what we don't want is we don't want the dog to become collar aware. So dogs oftentimes will become collar aware, um, which means they know that the collar is on and they might just, I actually had a conversation with the dog owner yesterday that they said, my dog is acts way better, is less anxious and less stressed with the remote collar on. Why? And some dogs absolutely need, crave, desire, thrive off of structure and guidance and leadership. And that was my answer to that, that a lot of dogs, honestly, are just really, really like better dogs with structure, with discipline, with somebody telling them what they can and can't do. So to answer your question, yes, you can definitely um, put the collar on before you start using it so they don't become collar aware. Uh, maybe like a week before is totally fine. Um, we rescued a dog and he is dominant with other dogs in my house, but not me. He is fine when we correct him, tell him no or gets mouthy. He has never attacked dogs though. Thoughts? Um, Sarah, it's a good question. I would just say like, hey, listen, um, you know, your dogs are, you know, I, I let dogs be dogs. That's the way, like if, if anybody would ask me like, how do you train? What's your style? I train, communicate and work with dogs, primarily how dogs work with dogs. Um, I, I, of course, outside of, um, outside of like using technology like the remote collar, but other than that, um, you know, it's okay for, for dogs to continue to communicate and, um, you know, uh, like communicate the way that they naturally do. It's totally fine. Um, but anyway, yeah, I would, uh, I would just like kind of let that play out a little bit. If it gets too crazy, you can step in, but I would just say over time, maybe get bringing them for walks and doing exercises with each other, um, would be like the best thing to do. Uh, Mac dog training. I have a Ford F-350 Super Duty King Ranch 6.7 diesel. Big boy. Um, it's all super nice. Um, all right. I'm going to do, let's see one more and then we're going to do the giveaway. Does the choke chain help make sure your dog won't try to bite passengers on the walk? Um, so any type of collar that we use on dogs, guys, is a reinforcement. So 
uh, yes and also no. If you're not reinforcing the collar properly and marking um, marking to the dog that like what they're doing is bad, um, then yeah, that's not that's not really gonna like completely stop that from happening. Although correcting your dog for doing things that you don't like will certainly over time help. Just like with Lola, like she corrected my Saint Bernard once when he was like 10 weeks old and he's so, so like obedient and like relaxed and calm around here for that. Um, so yes and no, it, it'll definitely help. All right, we're gonna do the giveaway. Um, I'm gonna give away two, on, not, not four, but two <laughs> online sessions. Um, and they're gonna be half an hour sessions a piece. And all you guys have to do is when this is done and processed and uploaded on YouTube, I want you guys to go in after and you have to letter by letter, you guys are no, noticing that I'm doing this a lot, letter by letter, enter your dog's name. So this is gonna be processed and uploaded on YouTube, so not in the chat, letter by letter. So if your dog's name is Lola, it's L, enter, O, enter, L, enter, A, enter. And I'm gonna select two of you and I'm also selecting all of the winners of the face mask right after this as well. So make sure you guys turn on your notifications to let you know when I contact you or when I when I tell you like, hey, you won. Um, and if you guys like this live stuff, let me know. I'll do this again. But once this is uploaded, you guys can go and enter. Uh, this is an international thing. So wherever you guys are living, you can do it. Um, but you don't have to do it now because it's not gonna matter because the chat is gonna disappear. So all you guys have to do is after this video is posted, go and like this video and leave your dog's name letter for letter like some of you guys are doing in this chat right now in the actual Instagram post. So once I post this, this is gonna go away. The chat's gonna go away. Um, I appreciate every single person uh, liking, subscribing, following. I have some exciting things coming up in the future. I, I really, really feel a sense of community with you guys. Like I said, we're growing um, and it's just a lot of fun. So don't forget to enter to win after this is posted. Like and leave a letter by letter, a comment. Um, please get my dog out. Uh, I can't get her out of that truck if I wanted to. She absolutely loves sunbathing in that seat. She's been doing it for about 11 years and she will try to bite you if you try to get her out because it's what she loves the most. So I appreciate your concern, but trust me when I say uh, she'd rather be in the truck. That's why she's in there. All right, guys, I'll talk to you next time. Lakota, be crazy. She's gonna continue to be crazy. I'm also building a new house, guys, which is exciting. And um, that'll be fun to, to film at because it'll be bigger and have a lot more stuff. I hope everyone has a wonderful day. I'm going to upload a new video this weekend. And again, I'm going live with Brittany Matthews tomorrow on Instagram. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Have a good day. Bye.